iPhone 10 versus iPhone 8 Plus versus S9 Plus versus Note 8. That video is coming up right now. Let's go. So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology. Welcome to the iPhone 10 versus the 8 Plus versus the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is because I got a question in just yesterday as I was preparing part three of the Samsung versus Apple series. This is actually not the same video. We're gonna be talking about which one of these to buy right now. A uh, question came in, said, I'm not gonna reveal the person's name, but said, currently on an iPhone 6S and searching for a new phone, and I'm having a hard time deciding between the S9 and the iPhone 8. The iPhone 10 is out of my price range. Can you please help me? give me some advice so that's where this video spawned and uh, these are the top offerings from both Apple and Samsung and instead of me mentioning specs I'm not gonna do that I have reviews on all these and videos upon all of these including the red iPhone 8 plus including the note 8 there's camera stuff I've done a bunch of comparisons I will leave a lot of those videos linked in the description if you're looking for more content but in this one I'm gonna talk about who should buy each one of these phones let's get into the first one okay so before we get begin with the first phone the iPhone 10 who should buy this device I'm gonna say that this video is gonna be subjective experience. It's based on my use case with all of these and what I've observed and the applications that are best suited for these devices. So first, before we go on more with the 10, remember this iPhone 10 is going to be updated just two months from now. So yes, it's gonna have a similar design with a similar camera look, maybe a similar hump, maybe a slightly decreased notch, but overall the design philosophy is going to stay the same here for the iPhone 10. So if you're planning on buying one of these, you're gonna be investing $1,000 just to have your phone updated in just a month and a half or so here. But some people are like, Nick, I don't care. I'm here to buy an iPhone 10. I need to know, is it worth it over these phones or not? And here we go. Well, the iPhone 10, first of all, if you're into you know tech and phones, if you wanna change for a long time, you should buy the iPhone 10, especially if you're an iOS user, been looking for change from the Apple side, this definitely represents change. It feels like the future of iOS. And even though it's like eight or nine months old already, it still feels very fresh, very modern. It's a very fashionable phone. So if you're into fashion, you know, you're the, you, you know, the person who, you know, likes to wear, you know, all the nicest clothes and you like fashionable items and you wear the, you know, you got the Apple watch going, the iPhone 10 will fit in just perfect with that. Uh, do you want a phone that basically fits in with the crowd? The iPhone 10, everybody knows what it is. It's instantly recognizable. But other than that, you should also buy the iPhone 10 if you want the most powerful iPhone in terms of, you know, just sheer processing performance and, you know, having the best camera on a device. This is definitely the most power you're going to get on an iPhone currently. That's pretty obvious. But of those things, if you find yourself in any one of those things I just said, you should definitely buy the iPhone 10. And one last thing I wanna mention, if you're a person who's been really going after, maybe trying to find the best fit in your hand, I think the iPhone 10 should be in the running for one of the best fits in the hand with the biggest screen. This thing is comfortable in the hand and has a really large screen for its size. So that's the iPhone 10. If you fell into any of those, you know, little statements I just made, that's what I have experienced and that's who I think should buy the iPhone 10 seriously. If you fall into those, you're gonna love the iPhone 10. Next up is the iPhone 8 Plus. Now, this one's not too hard to recommend to these type of people. So if you want that standard traditional 16 by nine, that iPad mini kind of feel in your hand, that's the iPhone 8 Plus. You're gonna love this thing. Now, the iPhone 8 Plus, in my experience, the iPhone 10 have been virtually identical in terms of their processing performance, their cameras, and just the phones themselves. It's basically holding just a different design in your hand. If you're a person who really was like, I don't like the Touch ID, over time I've noticed that I really like having that classic Touch ID, and if you're the person who wants the classic Touch ID, you're gonna want the iPhone 8 Plus here. If you have a 6 Plus, a 7 Plus, or maybe even a 6S Plus, and you're looking for just a little bit more out of your phone, you wanna be up to date, but you don't wanna go to these new narrow skinny phones, the iPhone 8 Plus is gonna be for you. And if you're a person who says, you know what, I'm done, I'm not paying a thousand for a phone, that's not happening, never for me, I mean, I would because you know I like to be on the latest and greatest tech, but if you're the person who's saying, no, I'm just not doing that for a phone, the 8 Plus, I think, is your second best choice you can get from Apple. So if you find, find yourself in any one of those categories, 
The iPhone 8 Plus should definitely do the trick. And if you buy the product red, you are supporting HIV and AIDS. Moving on to the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. Now, this one has been heavily marketed, you know, all over the place. So I'm pretty sure you recognize Galaxy S9 Plus. They just came out with a gold variant of this phone. If you're looking for one of the best Android experiences you can get with uh, basically iPhone status hardware and all that, you're going to love the Galaxy S9 Plus. Are you a person who's looking to have the most features you can get in a smartphone? The Galaxy S9 Plus is definitely going to be the one for you because this phone not only gives you beautiful hardware, it gives you a software set that gives you so many features that you're going to be finding things later on in your use case. Now, one of the arguments against Samsung's Galaxy S9 is going to be your software updates, but this phone's been getting some, you know, pretty quick security updates. It should get a few major ones as well. So it's going to last pretty long into the future. Of course, it's not going to go the five, six years you're going to get an iPhone. But again, like I've said in my prior videos, these phones are not going to probably run as quick as they do today in five years. So more than likely, something else is going to come along that you're going to might want to upgrade to. So the Galaxy S9 just offers so much in one package that if you're looking for a phone with the most feature set in one device, but you don't need an S Pen, the S9 is the phone for you. If you want a fashionable Android phone, I would say that the S9 is definitely up there. They got the lilac, they got the gold, they got the blue color, the black, not so much. But these, these popping colors, they got lilac this year. They're really shiny and they're fashionable colors, at least if you're gonna be on the Android side. Are you a person who's just tired of the Apple experience? You're done with this. You you, you know, you've had enough. It's fun. You'll, you'll keep a side iPhone, but you, you're ready to try something from Android and uh, you wanna go totally anti-Apple. You don't wanna stay even similar. I think that the S9 is a very different experience. It's kind of like the anti-Apple experience versus like uh, maybe a Huawei phone is closer to the I iOS experience with the EMUI. This is more like an anti-Apple experience, no notch, you know, features you could never get on an iPhone. So if you're that person and you wanna go totally on the opposite end of the Apple spectrum, you're gonna really love the S9. And I cannot forget to mention, if you're looking for one of the best and most versatile camera packages on a smartphone, the S9 with its variable aperture camera and dual setup with the telephoto lens is going to be one of the best packages you can get. Also, going at a f1.5 stop gives you incredible low light photos for the S9. You have pro modes as well in this camera. Our next part three with the Samsung versus Apple, we are going to talk about, you know, more about these cameras between Samsung and Apple, but this is a phone comparison video here. That's going to be the S9. People looking for a, probably the most versatile camera package you can get on a phone. Going on to the Note 8, my favorite personal Samsung series of devices is the Note series due to the addition of the S Pen. Now, a lot of people will say this is unnecessary. You never really use it. Not true. If you're aware and conscientious of the fact that it's there, you will use the S Pen. It's actually very useful in a lot of cases. And once you use it, going back to another phone that doesn't have it is not the greatest experience because you want to do things. You're just, you get used to it. It becomes a habit using it. Now, the Note 8, who should buy this phone? The person who's, you know, doing all their business on their phone, big screen, very large, probably the biggest you can get on any flagship phone. The Note 8's right up there in that category. You're gonna want the Note 8. Are you a person who really likes more of a squarish design? You're not into these curvy phones. You're gonna like the Note 8. And some people do prefer the squarish design. I mean, Sony does that with their phones. The Note 8's more of a squarish designed phone. Do you want one of the most beautiful displays that a smartphone can offer? And the one that's really gonna showcase that with its popping colors, the Note 8 is gonna impress you even a year after having this display. It is just a stunner in the display. So I think the display is most impressive on the Note 8 just due to its sheer capacity, size, and its vibrancy of colors. Now, a lot of sources can claim the iPhone 10 wins on the accuracy category. You can have your accuracy all day. When it comes to a display impressing you, the Note 8 is the one that's gonna make people take a second look. And are you artistic? Do you like to do a lot of drawing, but you know, you wanna do stuff on digital now? Then the S Pen is gonna be unbeatable here for you as well. They even have a little coloring section where you could color 
on your device as well. And just like I mentioned with the S9 expandable storage, Dex compatibility, you can turn this into a little mini pocket computer. If you find yourself falling into any of those categories, you should buy the Note 8. So before we close this out, I wanna talk about battery and I'll tell you which ones have the best battery in my experience in like best to last. All right, so in the real world, the phone that has the best battery life here in my experience is the iPhone 8 Plus. So if you're looking for the best battery life, I gotta mention this in any phone comparison basically that I make, the iPhone 8 Plus is going to be my pick for the best battery life. It's the one that lasted me the longest in my use case. Next up is the Galaxy S9 Plus with the second longest battery life I've seen uh, getting me through a full day quite easily with the Galaxy S9 Plus. Now, the iPhone 10 is pretty much neck and neck with the S9 Plus, very close. I mean, it's within half an hour or so in minutes. So S9 Plus and iPhone 10 are very close in my experience. So both very good battery life phones as well, but it goes one, two, three, and the Note 8, unfortunately, is the worst of the bunch here in my experience with the battery life, but not bad. It still gets you through most of the day. The fast charging capabilities on the Galaxy series is much better for me than the iPhone series. But other than that, that is iPhone 10 versus iPhone 8 versus Galaxy S9 Plus versus Note 8. The best offerings you can get right now. This is my experience. This is who I think should buy each one of these phones. So I hope that answers your question. The person who commented that, you know, should I get the iPhone 8 Plus or the S9 Plus? I hope that you, you've seen an area in this video that really, you know, hit the spot for you and made you decide I'm getting an 8 Plus or I'm getting an S9 Plus. But I thought we'd throw in the other two top offerings from Apple and Samsung. So part three to the Samsung versus Apple series will be coming later next week. Uh, we have T-Storms in Chicago right now. We're doing a camera section so i'm gonna wait till we get a little nicer of a day here and go get some more photo samples with these devices this is the p20 pro if you were wondering anyway if you found this video helpful enjoyable entertaining informing in any way shape or form do me a favor click that like button for me and if you're new here consider subscribing for more nick here helping you to master your technology be sure to be well thank you very much for watching and peace